G'day everyone, how are you going? I hope you're all well. Welcome to today's video. Uh, the video I've got planned is a little bit different to what I usually do. Today we're doing a, sort of a studio tour slash gear review slash sound test of basically all the equipment I use to make the tutorials and the covers. Um, and basically just run down all of my equipment. I've wanted to do this video for a while and I was meant to film it yesterday but I got caught up with a lot of stuff and I was hardly even home so that's why I didn't upload yesterday so I'll upload it tonight. If you're watching this now and you haven't yet subscribed make sure you go and do that. Also like this video, all the support that I get on these videos means a heap to me. We just hit 400 subscribers so stoked with that let's keep it going move it forward also make sure you check out my vlog channel just darcy pilts um i'll put a link to it in the description and i'll probably put a little icon thing up in the corner if you could check that out as well i would really appreciate it i think that's all of the introductory bullshit that i needed to do so let's just jump into the video Alright, so one of my favourite pieces of equipment that I, I use a lot is uh, the drum kit. And it's a Pearl Vision Birch 5-piece kit, complemented with uh, Zildjian ZBT cymbals. So I know that they aren't the best cymbals in the world, but for the amount of drumming I do, I feel like they suit my needs pretty well. I mean, I would love to upgrade them if Zildjian was... <laughs> if Zildjian's happy to sponsor me and send me a pair of K Dark cymbals, that would be awesome. Also, there's a uh, Sabian 15-inch crash in there as well, so just thought I'd add that. The kit sounds... I, lo I love the sound of it. Um, usually, I'm a fan of just having like a 12-inch tom and then a 16-inch floor tom as the... Uh, only toms that I use, but I like the sound of the 10 inch as well. It's not too bad. So, so here's what the kit sounds like. This amp's just a practice amp. I feel like it's pretty good for the price. Um, so it's a Marshall MG50 CFX. Uh, it does everything I need it to. It's a pretty good amp majority of the time. It's super loud for how for the size of it. So yeah, I would definitely recommend that amp if you're sort of an amateur person who's just getting into playing with other people or just need a good practice amp because that thing can go super loud and here's what it sounds like i'll just use the uh one of my mics which i like to mic the amp with a lot is the uh audio technica at 2020 as used by billy eilish and uh many other artists so here's what it sounds like on uh, all four different channels
This is my favorite piece of equipment, this one. Uh, this is a Fender American Stratocaster that I got for my, I think it was my 15th birthday. I bought it and mum and dad helped me buy it a little bit. I had to save up. I was pushing trolleys at Bunnings for like a year and a half to save up for that. So chase your dreams, people. <laughs> but yeah, I would say that's my favorite piece of equipment that I use. It's just an awesome guitar. It's so comfortable to play and it just sounds amazing for everything that I need it for. Next up, my uh, pretty cheap Court CE304T. Uh, this was about $240, which for an acoustic guitar is absolutely nothing. Um, I've, I have been looking at upgrading to either a Cole Clark or a Maiton, but I am not um, in the financial position to be spending close to $2,000 on a guitar. This does the trick for the moment. Um, it is a pretty pretty cheap guitar and it sounds it, but I feel like if you use a good set of strings like Elixir, if you use these strings, you can get some good tones out of it. Um, but yeah, it does the job. I like it for now. Um, but yeah, if I come into a good financial position anytime in the near future, I would love to upgrade. Then we've got a, uh, a Yamaha, I don't even know what it is. I got this guitar off my uncle. It was my first electric guitar. But yeah, this guitar sounds good. It's got really, I don't know what it is about the pickups, whether it's the dual setup that it's got, but it has the thickest tone out of every guitar I own. And a lot of the ones that I've played don't get nearly as thick as that. Perfect for like heavy riffs and like a lot of rhythm guitar, I would say. Not so good for lead, sort of solos and stuff like that, but yeah, still an awesome guitar. And um, shout out to my uncle for hooking me up with that. <laughs> All right, bass guitar. Uh, it's an SX PJ bass. I'll put it out there right now, SX have a bit of a reputation for being a dodgy and they're sort of classified under the cheap bracket. But that bass guitar, oh my God. Like, I bought that second hand off a dude that I went to school with um, for like 180 bucks. I think it was about 300 brand new. And the tones you get out of that can be comparable to like the $1,000 Fender basses and stuff like that. So I would definitely recommend that if you're looking to buy a bass guitar, and you want quality tones, but you don't want to spend an absolute shit ton of money, I would absolutely recommend that bass. My mic stand is just a Tama or Tama Stage Master Series mic stand. Super sturdy, absolutely amazing. You could basically throw the thing around and it's not going to break. Love it. <laughs> 
would recommend 10 out of 10. Probably the most crucial piece of equipment I own would be the Allen & Heath ZI-10 sort of USB mixer because obviously that's what I record all my audio through. That's what I'm recording this sound through right now that you're hearing, um, this narration, sorry. So probably the most crucial piece of equipment. It's not the greatest USB mixer out there, but I bought it because it came with the Audio Technica AT2020 in a bundle for, I think it was $419 a couple of years ago. So I thought that was the perfect sort of, it also came with Cubase LE AI Elements, which is the free version of Cubase. And that gave me enough software that I was able to do the first covers like Smoko and Scott Green and stuff like that. So all of that was recorded super basic in, um, Cubase LE AI Elements, I'm pretty sure it was called. You don't get the cleanest, like, zero latency recording out of it, but you get enough to get by if you're just a beginner. Works perfect, does everything you need it to. Yeah, I'd recommend it. Next up, we've got the JBL LSR305 Studio Monitors. Amazing speakers, like, for the price range, I think it was, like, 550 for the pair, I think. Um... I would completely recommend them 110% to absolutely anyone out there. The clarity that you get out of these monitors is amazing. Like if you do a recording and you listen back to it through that, it's going to tell you if you suck. You can hear every little minuscule detail that you need to know, which is absolutely crucial in the production of music. So I would definitely recommend those speakers to anyone out there. Microphones, we already discussed that I use the Audio-Technica AT2020 as sort of my main mic. I've also got a Shure SM58, um, which is, uh, that doesn't even need explaining. You guys know about that, surely. It's one of the best microphones out there in the world. So, oh, my studio headphones, which I love. They're Audio-Technica ATH M50X headphones. They're, yeah, they're amazing as well. I would recommend them. They are super clear, amazing quality. Like, if you can't afford to get speakers and headphones and you just want headphones, go the Audio Technica ones for sure. They're so good. I love them. Besides the guitar, my other favorite piece of equipment would be my MacBook Pro, which I use pretty much every single day to make videos, to edit videos, to record music, absolutely everything I do on my MacBook. And I use Logic Pro 10 as the software. Apple software on an Apple computer it just makes sense. Also, when I was using the free version of Cubase, I was looking at getting the full version of that, but it was like, I think it was 800 or $900. Whereas because I was a student at the time, I could get Logic Pro 10, Final Cut Pro 10, Compressor, and a few other apps all for $300 on a sort of student bundle. So that basically set me up to do everything I need for not too much money. So this has been my sort of home studio tour. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. All the support means a lot. Uh, if you want more content, let me know down in the bottom if you want me to do more videos like this. Also, I do a heap of guitar tutorials, so if you have any songs you'd like me to make a tutorial for, just chuck them down in the comments below. I'll see if I can get around to it. Um, I upload Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 6pm Australian Standard Time or Australian Eastern Standard Time. Thanks for watching.